my opinion on this is they actually know what they're doing. They know they're debasing the currency, and they've all kind of agreed it. It's it seems. Uh, how do you think through that? Because I we all say the central bankers are dumb. I'm not sure that's true. I think they know exactly what's going on. I don't think they're dumb, and I think more so the the, the politicians. Right? If I'm a politician in any system and I have the ability to print money, what do I do? I give away free shit to people to for my for their for their support. Whether it's a you know one man one vote democratic system or it's some sort of like fascist communist system, it doesn't really matter. At the end of the day, the per- people in charge promise the majority of the people who aren't that wealthy, like, hey, I'm going to do something for you. A Securities and Exchange Commission approved 11 spot Bitcoin exchange traded funds about three months ago. This was major news, and many anticipated it would take years. Bitcoin keeps leaving the market. The 10 new ETFs are also buying more Bitcoin for themselves. On April 3, 2019, BlackRock EBIT bought 27, 31,961 Bitcoin valued $16.9 billion. It is the first of 10 new ETFs and the second largest Bitcoin buyer after GBTC. Fidelity's FBTC is second with 46,620 Bitcoin worth $9.72 billion. ARK Investments' RKB places third with 43,372 Bitcoin, while Bitwise's BB has 32, 15.38 Bitcoin. The other 5-spot Bitcoin ETFs and the newcomer Hashspot ETF 2,899 Bitcoin worth $33 billion. All-spot Bitcoin coin ETFs including GBTC hold 835,000 Bitcoin. ETF approval and debut remain history's most significant event. It was the most successful ETF launch ever, according to BlackRock CEO Larry Finn on Fox Business. Finn also said IBIT is the fastest growing ETF ever. Nothing has accumulated assets as quickly as IBIT in ETF history. Bitcoin ETFs marry traffic and crypto land, providing new chances. By adding this asset, traditional investors can diversify. Demand for cryptocurrency products can boost prices significantly for investors. BlackRock and JP Morgan also benefit greatly. Reasons why Bitch's founder and former CEO Arthur Hayes B. Now, they don't tell them I'm just going to print money and debase your currency to pay for it. But again, it's all the same game. There's nobody in the world, however many elections are happening this year, except for maybe Argentina, which are like, hey, we've spent too much. We need to cut back on government services. We shouldn't be doing all these things. We're going to balance the budget. It's going to be tough, but we take our knocks now and the future is bright. No one's campaigning on that anywhere in the world. And so if that's not going to happen, then why would you stop? Yeah, my view on that is they don't want to blow up the baby boomer complex. You know, the great baby boomer clump complex is where all the savings are. They are baby boomers themselves. They don't want the equity market to go down because that's the collateral of the system. So they protect that lot and sacrifice everybody else in the entire system. Because a retiree, it's fine. You debase the currency, your equity, you know, your share portfolio goes up. You've got higher interest payments right now. They're all fine. It's everybody else is totally screwed in this. Yeah, but again, they clearly have crypto. So we have there is a way out. So let's talk about that. So this crypto life raft, the regulators are kind of struggling still with letting it happen. They want to throttle it. How are you seeing the big picture play out of the regulation, the adoption, you know, and how governments allow it to happen and that kind of phasing? So there was a paper written by this guy at a Columbia Columerus. I can't pronounce his name. And it was about fiscal dominance. Basically, the federal government has issued so much debt, the the spending is so high versus the tax receipts that any sort of notion of independent central banking goes out the window and the central bank becomes a tool of the federal government to pay the bills, right? And if you think about what the problem is for the banking system is, okay, we know all this inflation is coming. We know that we're going to be forced to buy these bonds and we know that's going to ding our profitability. But there's this, there's this escape raft and if called crypto. And if people really latch onto this and they say, hey, why do I have these dollars, euros, yen, yuan, whatever, let me go buy an asset that's outside of this whole system and then I'll just sit back and watch, watch the fireworks. That's not good for the banks. They're not going to make any money on that. So, you know, what do they do starting in 20... 20- 23, uh, all of a sudden, you know, the Winkle clowns, they try to get an ETF approved for 10 years. Did did uh, did the Lord's work for 10 years trying to get this ETF approved in the US? Still don't have one, by the way. 
And Larry Fink, within six months, gets an ETF. And so TradFi says, okay, this crypto thing works. There's obviously this zeitgeist of too much federal spending. I mean, Jamie Dimon rages on about it every fucking quarterly report. Oh, yeah, the U.S. is spending too money. U.S. is spending too much, much money. Well, instead of them getting fucked by them being forced to buy bonds that are negative real yielding, well, let's have a product that we can throw our clients into and make fees that's still within the system. And that's why I think these ETFs are now being embraced, which is, hey, here's this crypto derivative. You don't actually get to use Bitcoin because you can't withdraw it. You can't even redeem it. You want to redeem, you get dollars back uh, in, in these ETFs, not Bitcoin. And so it's just a way to put all this these people who want to get into this crypto life raft, but don't want to put in the real work and deal with private keys and, you know, OPSEC and all the things. I mean, it's, it's annoying, but again, freedom isn't free. And here, here's this ETF. You can subscribe through your retirement account, your pension fund. You can buy it on a stock exchange. You've got all these, you know, respectable looking folks selling this to you now saying this is a way to diversify against inflation. And the banking system is reaps fees. And that, we've seen how successful it's become. So I think there's going to be a Bitcoin ETF, an Ethereum ETF, a Solana ETF. Regardless of what any politician says, the banks know that this is their way to stave off the effects of being forced to buy these bonds that are bad deals for them. According to people familiar with the situation, the SEC is still set on its goal of regulating Ethereum by calling it a security. The agency is also reportedly looking into the Ethereum Foundation and issuing subpoenas to companies that have done business with the foundation to force them to hand over confidential documents that the agency thinks could be used against them. Despite this, Larry Fink of BlackRock believes that an Ethereum-based spot ETF can still be approved even if the cryptocurrency market crashes. Eight potential issuers, including BlackRock, have sent applications to the SEC to bring a spot Ether ETF to the market. The SEC is expected to make a final decision next month, but industry experts are less optimistic that the application will be approved because Gary Gendler clearly supports the left-leaning political view. Some experts believe that no tangible no progress will be made until after the November elections. If there is a government change, Wall Street will be up against the SEC. Who do you think will win the fight between Larry Think Inc., Gary Gendler, and Elizabeth Warren? You can tell us what you think in the comments as we show you more clips from Pal and Arthur's talk. And also... The government quite likes it because the money's actually not leaving the system. It's not you and I, you know, opening, you know, having our ledger and taking our money outside of the system, which is, you know, why, you know, when I saw the European mess back in 2012, that's what got me into, into Bitcoin because I just wanted to be outside the system. But these people aren't. So they're just kind of renting the performance of it without leaving the system. And that's a nice way for the government to say, well, guys, you play in this, but it's going to stop them opening the Coinbase account and at least starting the journey. And, it, and it's it's better to do it this way than to ban something. Because when you ban something, then people are like, oh, well, why are you banning it? Maybe I want to have some of it. You know, Look at the illegal narcotics trade around the world. You tell people they can't have something, they say, no, I'm going to have it. Um, <laughs> <laughs> so why not just say, oh, yeah, you want you want crypto? Oh, here's, here's a BlackRock Fidelity, blah, 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 ETF. It's safe. It's custodied and you no... Know, you know, your bank that you know and trust, blah, 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 come on in. So I think that is, for some people, their crypto thing. They want to take their fiat, trade crypto, and earn more fiat, which, again, is fine. It's, it's a choice that people get to make. But if you want to take your fiat and save it in something that's outside of the system, then you have to go and buy physical Bitcoin and deal with what the issues that come with owning physical Bitcoin. And for me, I know the government's probably thinking, great, we've got everybody contained I actually think of it reverse. It's a Trojan horse. Because once you start to learn about this space, as you know, you go down a very, very deep and long rabbit hole and you realize why you're doing it. And before you know it, then the ETF doesn't make sense for you anymore because you want to diversify. So how my mental model for these ETFs is we got crypto land and fiat world. And this is just a trade deal between the two. So hot money flows. If you think of VC as FDI, and you think of this as hot money flows, you know, it's just a trade deal. For me, it's like this is as big a deal to me as China opening up after the WTO agreement, because we've got now a free trade agreement essentially between them. Well, relatively free. The market value of Bitcoin, which is currently just over $67,000, has gone up by about 1.36% in the last 24 hours, 
It is still largely stable between $65 and $70,000, but experts are confident that this will be a very good bull market for buyers. A friend thinks that Bitcoin will reach at least $200,000 by 2025 if this is a normal cycle. If ETFs keep buying it, it could go even higher. Arthur's prediction is more optimistic, but it's based on macro conditions rather than crypto principles. He thinks that Bitcoin could go straight to a million dollars in 2025 if macro conditions get worse, especially if there is a big bond market crash in the next few months. What do you think about the discussion in PAL and Arthur's predictions for Bitcoin in the crypto market in 24 and beyond? Please leave your thoughts and comments below. Also, make sure you like this video, subscribe to the channel, and turn on post notifications to see more videos like this.